Hello friends, welcome back to Joyful Half Acre. I'm Kim and today we are going to be cleaning the house. We had the flu go through our home this last week. Um, six out of the seven of us got the flu or a flu-like virus anyway. And so my house is a disaster. <laughs> um, it's quite a mess and this one, Archer, who is under the blanket, he's still sick a little bit. Um, Bryce is much better. He's on the last couple days of it. He's feeling good, but still has a little sinus. Ella, she, uh, Ella, her poor little nose from rubbing it so much. <laughs> she's feeling much better, but she's still got a little bit of a raw nose. So. They're feeling better, but my house is a mess. <laughs> when you're sick, you just are in survival mode and you do what you can and leave the rest for when everybody's better. So now that we're all better, I need to disinfect this house. So I thought I'd bring you all along because some of the things I'm gonna be cleaning, you may not have thought of to clean after sickness has ran through the house. They're, not always the normal things we think of and some are obvious that we all do but come along as i show you 15 things that you need to make sure you clean after sickness has come through your home all right first thing i need boiling water for because this is probably something you may be have not thought of but after sickness has come through your home, a good thing to clean is toothbrushes. We have all them germs and you're brushing your teeth and I actually have heard it said that you should replace your toothbrush after sickness, after the flu and stuff, but I'm kind of a cheapskate so I don't wanna waste that money, especially since, you know, I just got my kids these toothbrushes for Christmas and that was only, you know, a couple weeks ago. So I don't wanna throw them away yet. So we are going to disinfect them with boiling water. And this is my toothbrush organizational system. I've got a color for each kid. Well, the four kids and then mine. All I'm gonna do is pour a little boiling water in their cup and put their toothbrush in it. All right, I will let that sit for just a couple minutes and that should kill all the germs and I'm gonna do that for the rest of these also. I also, before I put the boiling water in these, I did give all of the cups a wash with some Castile soap and water and I just washed them up because these cups are gonna be full of germs too. So I just gave everything a little wipe down with the Castile soap and water and rinsed it off. And now they're all disinfected from the boiling water. I'll just dump it out and I'm ready to put them away. All right, and number two is pretty obvious, your bathroom. You wanna clean it all the time anyway, but especially after sickness, you wanna make sure you clean areas that you don't always clean. Obviously, we always wash our vanity off our bathroom counter but you also want to wash maybe like your doorknobs the knobs of things that you normally don't and I like to use hydrogen peroxide to clean in the bathroom I think it disinfects real well I try to use um, natural more natural cleaners and so I just try to wipe, wipe down the knobs and stuff and do your vanity and stuff very well. So that's kind of an obvious thing. But something you may not think of, number three is soap dispensers. In the bathroom and in your kitchen or wherever you have them in the home. People are, you know, sick and stuff and then they're touching the top of this soap dispenser. So after sickness and actually just every once in a while anyway it's always good to spray that down a little bit and wipe down the outside of your soap dispenser 
and then I just rinse it off a little. All right, we're done with the bathroom. Number four is wash bedding. The kids are have all been sick, and I've been washing some of their bedding off and on um, the last couple days. I've done a little bit, but now I need to wash everything I haven't gotten to yet. So I'm going to strip some of the beds and get that laundry started. Along with this, number five is stuffed animals. Any stuffed animals that your kids just love and carry around all the time, well, they've got germs on them too. So, but how about one more day? Camo can, camo's still clean. I'm sorry, buddy. Hand over the owl. Uh, I get something in return. <laughs> how about camo back? You can have camo back after his bath. Sometimes they're not happy about this part, but the owl needs washed. It Put needs on a your bath. Goggles, buddy. <laughs> now I am gonna wash camo, but I am not gonna wash all these other stuffed animals over here because they haven't really been played with. She just played with them this morning and kind of threw them out. So I'm not washing everything, just the ones that I know are just probably teeming with germs and probably needed a bath anyway. So it's a good time to give them that bath. <laughs> I'm going to wash your bedding. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. Hey, my Yes, I'm going to Again, yes. Next thing, number six, is often played with toys. Obviously, these have been played with because, well, this room's a mess. So what I'm going to do is spray them down with hydrogen peroxide. Now, I am actually not going to do this right now because I planned on doing it last night. That way it sits overnight and by morning it's all dry, kids won't touch it or anything, and I didn't get it done. So I'm going to wait and do this tonight at bedtime. I'll just give everything a really light spray with the hydrogen peroxide. It'll be dry at, by morning and the kids can play with it no problem. So number seven is one you may not have thought of either. And this is something I'm, I don't know, I always think to clean these. I'm weird. Doorknobs. We touch these all the time and just think about how many germs are on an average doorknob that you touch. I don't know. I'm not a germaphobe, really, but you know, if you start thinking about things too much, you can, it can kind of start bothering you. <laughs> so anyway, doorknobs, I'm going to go through and clean as many of them as I can think of. And I just use vinegar. The cleaner I use on most things is orange infused vinegar. I just use a mason jar. I fill it with cut up oranges and fill it with vinegar and let it sit in the windowsill for a month. And then strain out the oranges and you've got good smelling vinegar. So that's all I use for cleaning for most of my house. All right, <laughs> number eight, light switches. That's another thing you may not think of, and I'm not gonna spray exact just on the light switch because that might be dangerous. I'm going to spray my rag, and then I'll wash the light switch. This isn't as easy to do one-handed when you... <laughs> and number nine on my list is the remotes. We touch them all the time also and it's just a good idea to give them a little wipe down too. And there you go again. I just spray my rag and then wipe it real quick. So, Because you don't want to actually spray the electronics because it's probably not a good idea to get them that wet. But it's always a good idea to get them disinfected regularly. But especially after the flu. 
And look, she found a new bed to jump on. <laughs> Archer's mattress is down here because when my kids are sick, I like them to be nearby me and my bedroom's downstairs. So I want to make sure that I can hear them real well in case they need me in the middle of the night. So she's jumping on Archer's bed while they watch What's in the Bible. Really great show if you've never seen it before. Anyway, on to number, I believe, 10. <laughs> Electronics. Think of how dirty your phone is. I mean, it is regularly anyway, but after being sick, really needs a good wipe down. So I'm just going to gently wipe it down too with, same with computer. I'm just going to wipe it down real quick too with vinegar. Not much, but just the outside. When my kids are sick, I allow them to play video games because what else is there to do? So. I'm going to wipe down, I don't even, I don't even know what they play with for sure. I know they play with the switch, so I'll just give it a little wipe down just with my damp rag and just kill anything. And as I say, don't mind my mess because I had this clean, but then life happens for a week and I don't do anything and the house falls apart. So <laughs> please don't mind my disaster of a house as I'm cleaning. Next up is, I know I keep walking through these rooms with no lights on. I need to like just leave the lights on. Terrible about that. I leave a room and I always have to turn off the light, but then yeah, anyway. Uh, then it's dark walking through it with the camera. Next up is all hard surfaces. I'm gonna give the desk a good cleaning. I make sure I wipe down my desk and all the stands in the house and the TV stand and just any hard surfaces, especially the ones that you don't always think about, but. Yeah, like you're not thinking of one right now. What? What am I forgetting? I've been thinking it, thinking it about it for the Doodles. <laughs> what am I forgetting to wash, Bryce? The stairs. Uh, yeah. Oh, that is a very good idea. Because the, the railing on the stairs. Yes. This is another one of them things I don't think we always think about to do, but should be done regularly also. <laughs> I'm really glad he reminded me about this. All right, next up is often touched walls. My kids, this is coming from the kitchen and around into the living room, and they touch these walls, I think, every time they go through. And so I'm just gonna give just these couple spots right here a quick wipe down. Next thing I'm gonna clean is the furniture. I like to spray down the cloth furniture just with a little bit of cleaner. I'll probably do my chair here with the hydrogen peroxide because I know this won't stain it and if it does, you know, it's not a good chair so I don't care. But my blue couch here which is newer and I don't want to <laughs> hurt it or stain it. I'll probably use vinegar for that. <laughs> Those kids are being weird in there. All right, next thing I'm gonna clean is water bottles and drink cups. That's number 14, and that may be something you haven't thought of. So, I mean, I try to get them a clean cup every day, but like water bottles, they'll use for a few days in a row. And since they were sick, I wanna make sure that I get them good and clean, disinfected. And the last thing on my list that I'm gonna do, number 15, is mop the floors. First, I have to get the floors ready to mop. <laughs> As I said, the, it's been a full week. <laughs> so I need to get all the floors picked up and swept real good. Um, you can see here, we had, uh, toilet paper out using his Kleenexes and I left some out overnight and one of my cats destroyed a roll of toilet paper and it was all over the house. So 
<laughs> I need to finish cleaning up that mess. I got most of it cleaned up. So I'm going to finish cleaning my house today and get it all disinfected and ready to live normal life again, hopefully. And hopefully we're done with the illness. Um, you're not going outside. He wants to go outside and play, but he just got over being sick and I'll show you outside. This is our outside. It is ice and it's actually snowing a little, I think. I don't know. It's been doing that and it's just terribly icy. All right, five minutes and come right back in, okay? So thanks for stopping by today, friends, and watching. I'm going to get the rest of my house clean and I hope you have maybe thought of something that you hadn't thought of before that, oh, I better go clean them toothbrush holders or maybe I should wipe down the light switches and doorknobs. And those are just some things that people don't always think about that um, still need a little bit of disinfecting after some illness. So thanks for watching. I hope you'll like, subscribe and join us in this joy filled life. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.